So when you're working with the GraphQL server, a lot of times you're going to be fetching data from a lot of different places. So just not just a database, but also, for example, an external API. And Apollo created something to make that a little bit easier. They're calling it data sources, and this one is called the REST data source. So this is something to help you make requests and also to cache those requests. So I want to give my thoughts on this because I recently tried this out, made a little example. And to do it, I was fetching data from the random user API. And what this returns is just a random user. And uh, I was rendering just the gender, the email, and the phone number for this. So this is what it looks like. I was using Apollo Server 2 here. And I have some type defs. So I just have a person here. And then I am fetching the person in two different ways. And then I just return an array of people from that. Um, and if we look at the resolvers, here's what I would do if I wasn't using this new data sources thing. So I would instead just say fetch here from the API. I get the response, the data from it, get the JSON, and then I would grab the results and return that. Um, and we can see this in action. I have the playground up and we can just fetch a user and then this is what it would look like. So what does this look like if we were to use data sources instead? Well, here's what my resolver looks like. So I can get this thing called data sources from the context. And I say data sources dot random user API get person. And then I just return that. So how can I get this to work? Well, how it works is you create a data sources, um, I guess function basically on your Apollo server when you create it. And this is gonna be run on every single request. So every single request, it's going to create a new random user data source. And this is something I created. Um, and if we come over here, we can see what that looks like. So it extends from the REST data source. And then in our constructor here, I'm just specifying the base URL. And this is so you don't have to keep typing the URL over and over again uh, if you have multiple queries here. So in this case, I only have a single query. And I'm just calling get person here. And I'm just awaiting the response. And then I just return the results here. You'll notice I have an empty string here because this is exactly the URL that I want to execute on. So what that'll do is pretty much the same thing you see up here. Um, so it's gonna say, you'll notice how it automatically injects the data sources here into the context. So I didn't have to add that. Um, so whatever I pass in here, so I called it the random user API so I can access it up here, data sources .random user, and then I call it get person over here. So now I can call the get person function right there. Um, and then we can see this in action. It's actually gonna return just like the same thing. And we run that. And then if I run that a few times, we'll just get a new person every time we run it because it's a random user, same as it would over here, right? So that is kind of how you set it up and how that works. Um, so one thing I noticed that they talk about, why is this better? to use this rather than rather than just writing a fetch command up there. Um, one, I guess it's a little nicer to encapsulate everything in its own uh, class over here and have it set up like this. Uh, and you can just call it and it's a little cleaner in your resolvers. But you could pretty much set that up without using this REST data source, right? Um, it seems like the big draw to the REST data source is they uh, talk about is the caching it gives you. So. It creates a new, so by default in their example, they have this, uh, they create one every request. So really the only thing it's gonna be caching is it's almost like data loader. It reminds me a lot of data loader is it's only gonna be caching things on that single request. So for example, if I call this get person multiple times for some reason, um, so if I did something like this, um, real response, and then that's what I returned. So real response. And then I can just await both of them. So I'm calling this random user get person twice, um, but we're gonna only, it's only gonna call it once. Um, and it's, if we just run this a couple times, we don't see a different result there, but we can see that uh, well, we can't see it, but this will run once and then this will run twice, but it only will send one request to the server and it will cache the second request. Um, and it only really happens in the single request that this happens in. Um, so I have it in the same resolver, but this the, the request could happen anywhere in the GraphQL tree, right? So you might have 
uh, a child node further down the tree that actually calls the data source get person and then that would be cached. So that's really the use case is if you wanted to cache it in between requests. Now, it seemed like you may be able to use this also for uh, not just in between quests or requests, but just like a permanent kind of cache sort of thing where you kind of get to choose uh, how long the uh, it lasts in the cache. So I created a random user now, not on every single request, but I'm just creating a random user API. Uh, so this data source object I'm creating once up here and then I'm just passing in. Now, the default seems to just cache that forever. If I come over here and I just run this, I'm now getting this Tobias dude every single time I make a request. Now, one of the big things with caches is you want to uh, be able to invalidate the cache or put the time to live is what it's called, time to live, or time to live, I mean. So here uh, I can pass in the this, and this will specify how long I want it to last, but I couldn't really get that working. And there's not really any great examples on it. It still really fetches the same user every single time. Um, and Apollo server doesn't really have any examples on their site um, of how this works with that. They have, uh, to be even, to figure out that I can pass in this TTL, I just had to look through the source code, which I think I didn't read correctly because it doesn't seem to be caching it only for five seconds. Uh, the other thing about this is you can actually get it to work with Redis, which is nice. So at the very bottom, they talk about, well, they also talk about why you might want to use it instead of data loader. Um, but you can implement your own cache, or in this case, use a Redis cache. So that's nice. That's something I would definitely use. Um, but I think I actually like um, setting something up where I can kind of just have Redis as a cache that works between requests. So I want, I want to just cache this get person for like, for example, maybe five requests or something. I um, mean, that sort of thing, I'm not sure if REST data source is meant to be set up for. Um, it may only be used to kind of, uh, as you saw over here, instead of just having this create a new user, uh, have it in line like that. So creating a new instance of the data source, every single request and only caching be between requests is maybe really what it's just meant for. Um, but I think if I was implementing something, um, instead of just using this data source, I think what I would want to set up is something with Redis and cache, cache it between multiple requests. And maybe I only have a caching for like 30 seconds, for example. And then I also think I would want to set something up that not only just works for uh, REST API, but also works for my database and any other kind of sources I might get things from. And I think that's kind of the direction Apollo may be going with, with these data sources. Um, so I think what they're wanting to set up, I'm not for sure, but this is one way they could do it, is they have a cache for their data sources and then they have specific data sources. So for example, here's the Rust data source. You may be able to set up a database, uh, da database data source, and then that would cache, be able to cache uh, both of those things. Um, and it doesn't look like they're there yet, but that's something I would plan on implementing if I was working on a project. I would probably just implement myself and have uh, use Redis and have that cache stuff and just fetch it from Redis every time instead of trying to use like uh, the data source, I think, for now. Yeah, but that's my thoughts on data source. This code I'll put up on GitHub if you want to check it out and play with it. If you've used the data source before, let me know what you guys think of it and if you like it. Um, or what you guys have set up in your own projects.